Okay, we're recording. So, all right, there's another dev update. Update two. We are now in our actual office in the co-working space. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we have a private office. So, yeah. Um, some people are asking about the team. Yeah, so we're going to do a little overview of the team, give you guys an idea of who we're working with. Um, this way you guys know, um, especially the advisory boards, you guys have an idea of the at least the industries and the expertise that we're bringing um, with our expansive team. Yeah. So, I um, mean, we'll start off with the chief team. Um, obviously, Stu and I, CEO and COO. Um, then moving on, we'll talk about Pitt Barton. Uh, he's our CFO, uh, brings a lot of experience. He's worked with the U.S. Treasury, uh, ran a hedge fund, uh, started multiple businesses, um, as well as a blockchain incubator. Um, and he uh, he's our CFO running uh, the finances over here. Um, so let's yeah. Start. Pip is, uh, he's focused on our enterprise side, so he's talking with, like, uh, Affleck Ventures, he's talking with, like, Verizon Ventures, trying to figure out where we fit in uh, to provide blockchain and the toolkit uh, to these companies. So, he's much more on the enterprise side, uh, yeah, he's based in Cambridge, right by Harvard, so he's got, like, a really good network in terms of, like, smart people, uh, yeah. so I'm pretty happy with him. Um, and then intro or, or some context about me is that um, I basically uh, worked as my previous startup was doing software consulting and so what I did was I, I basically built startups startup version ones for, for companies uh, in the area so these were mostly like small businesses and things like that you know a lot of people had these ideas they had no idea how they're gonna monetize it they had no idea about any of the technology, they had no idea how to launch it and things like that. So it was um, it was interesting in that regard, and I took a lot of the lessons I learned in my previous job, which was doing prototypes at uh, technology commercialization office for a uh, large university. And so I'd see a lot of these technologies coming through, and basically my job was to look at it: how do you monetize it? How do you build it? And what's the what's the entire life cycle of the application moving forward? So. Uh, what I learned there was that uh, the, the kernel that these researchers have, the actual IP, and then what the application is are far different from each other. Uh, the academic world is probably like 10 years into the future of the, of the market, and that's only because the researchers are really good at researching, but they're not good at commercializing. So yeah. a lot of the IP um, is you know phenomenal, but it's not marketed well because researchers aren't... Uh, business people. And so that was my job, was to come up with the solutions. So my whole take on this blockchain thing is essentially that, and how do we lower the barrier of entry so that more innovation can happen. Yeah, and then as for myself, um, I have used to work in uh, operations as well as category development. So I've had a little bit of finance sales experience as well as just overall um, operation management. Um, so when I came here, um, I helped mainly on the business development side at first, and so I took on a full-time role in that. Um, so I focus on the networking, uh, securing these corporate sponsorship or partnerships, um, and whatever else we need, especially I'm helping on marketing, anything else for the business development. Um, I currently also act um, as an advisory board member for DeKeyCoin and um, CoinHealth, so I help them out as well, uh, but main, mainly I focus on Lambda as my full-time career. Yeah, Nick, uh, he, he grinds for Landon, and then based on a lot of the lessons we learn here, he's able to help these other companies um, get off the ground and they avoid some of the pitfalls that we've had, um, to say the least. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, so then we have Sev, and Sev's here too, although he is out of the office right now, but he's working on a lot of the core research uh, and IP. So right now he's working on the Clove interoperability protocol, um, and he's making sure that we have a way to automate Bitcoin scripts so we can interoperate Lambda with Bitcoin. And the idea is that we interoperate with all the main chains. That gets people really excited. And then interoperating with other um, Lambda-based chains is really easy. Uh, and then that can solidify all the applications that, that exist in the network. Yep. Um, and then we have Mario, too. And he's actually based in Spain. And he's, he's more of an economic guy. Uh, Mario actually messaged me and said he's working with uh, Nick, we have another Nick, in Spain who we're kind of forming some interesting relationship in terms of like market analysis 
and things like that. So that's what Mario is doing. But he is really keen on the economic stuff. So he he's he's a developer too. So he'll he'll all help out with smart contracts. Um, generally more the crypto focused development rather than like uh, Seb and I are more just general programming. Um, and I should also note that we're bringing on more resources now to, to accelerate the development of this. But um, yeah, Mario also does a lot of the economics uh, in terms of like, okay, what's the crypto market? Where can we position ourselves? What makes sense in terms of you know, um, our resources available? Yeah. And then, um, so that's kind of the core team at Landon. Uh, these are the guys that came from the start or our founding members. Um, so now we move on. We have our marketing team um, who's led by Jordan. Uh, they have a team of around six people that range from developers to graphic designers. Um, so they're really leading the marketing, which you might have seen in the past few days. We're on a war path now. Uh, we, we launched a new bounty program. The social media is booming. Yeah. Um, our Telegram channel has uh, quadrupled in yeah. the past two days, which is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so they're doing, they're doing a great job. You guys will see them. Um, in the communities as well, um, so they're, they're they're fantastic. So that's kind of the main working team for Landon. Mm -hmm. um, and then we move on to our advisors, starting with uh, Christina Dolan. Mm -hmm. Christina Dolan is a superstar. So she's our um, insurance based advisor. Um, so she is an MIT a Media Lab alum. Um, so she has great connections at MIT. Uh, she's also the co-founder of IX Ledger, um, and she is also part of the Forbes Technology Council. Yeah. Um, vice chair of the MIT Enterprise Forum in New York, and um, she's fantastic. She's, she's very, very experienced. Yeah, she's an OG. She's pretty much connected to everyone that I, I connect to on LinkedIn, and I think they all know her personally. And yeah. what's interesting is that Kip knew her independently of us, uh, so that was also interesting. <laughs> but because he's in Boston, and that's where she's based too, um, although she's flying all over the globe, but she's, she's pretty respected, one of the originals in the space. Yeah, we're very lucky to have her. Yeah. Um, then next we have Gianluca. Uh, he's our automotive advisor. He works over at Volkswagen. So he is the IT process integration manager. Um, so what he does is he focuses on system planning and technology innovation. Um, so he's really helping us, you know, giving us idea of like the supply chain base where we can implement blockchain in these huge, like especially Volkswagen, huge supply chain based company when they're creating these cars. Um, so he's been a great help giving us an idea of how we can implement and really infiltrate these corporate structures um, that are very, you know, large scale. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, what, what you should know, next is Leonard. Leonard works, uh, I think, out of Singapore. Um, and he works for Visa. He does a lot of um, kind of work for the Ethereum Foundation. And so he was doing FVPN, I think. And so he's a developer. And he works in a big uh, technology, you know, fin finance technology company. And I should mention that all of our advisors right now are positioned in a way that we can ask them industry uh, questions, like yeah. how does blockchain apply to your industry? And that's the advisory role we're taking. So it's more of like that sort of role than them just kind of being like, this is how you have to do it. Yeah. It's more of a, a back and forth yeah, communication. Now, I guess we should say, I don't want to preemptively say this, but we are talking with other uh, uh, people who can uh, guide us in that regard, you, you know, um, more info on that maybe in the next few days. Yeah, so um, that'll, be, that'll be coming out soon. <laughs> um, all right, so got to run into the rest of these guys. Leonard's great. Um, yeah. He's been a great help as well. He's been on call a few calls with us. Um, we're trying to reach out to these big Fortune 500, so thank you, Leonard. Um, we also have Goplin. He's our banking advisor. He works over at Co America Bank. He has over, I think, thirty years of IT experience. So he's not only you know great banker in that area, but he knows exactly what's going on with blockchain and all this new tech. Mm -hmm. um, so he's uh, he's been great. Yeah. Yeah, we're working on an interesting case study with him, um, which is essentially uh, how do we streamline the loan process? So Comerica has their internal processes that can be automated with some sort of smart contract. And that's what we're working on is figuring out what that is and how can they use Lambda for that. Yeah. Um, next is uh, Noah Stone. Um, I've known Stone, uh, Noah for quite a few years. He was um, a young entrepreneur. 
uh, and started getting into the venture capital side of things, which is why uh, we chose him to give us an idea of the venture capital, the investment side. Um, so he started very young. I think he was he does live Shark Tanks, and he was voted one of the best uh, young uh, venture capitalists in San Francisco. Um, so he's been very helpful, especially with some VC outreach uh, and getting us, you know, uh, more inept with um, a few of these guys. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Vivek, and he's from Apple. He worked on their AirDrop team. And uh, he is interested in more of the IoT because, you know, AirDrop is sort of like a, a, a device to device sort of thing. But what's very interesting is he started uh, one of the major blockchain groups here in San Francisco. So there's big opportunity there to talk with him and get some speaking engagements that help us kind of tell more people about what we're doing. Yeah. And then um, next is XM. Uh, he's our real estate advisor, um, so he works over at uh, Daimler Real Estate. Um, so he runs the Berlin chapter over there, which is uh, impressive, very impressive. And um, that's, uh, yeah, he's a member of the German Blockchain Association, and he's the head of processes over at uh, that real estate company. Uh, so he's been giving us a good idea of how we can implement blockchain to the uh, process between real estate transactions, um, yeah. which could possibly be buying a house with Bitcoin, who knows? So, yeah. It's interesting. One of the things that he said um, is that uh, he's based in Germany. So, like, um, which is, I think, where Daimler's based, because Mercedes uh, is German, I think. Um, but, so, he, he runs the International Blockchain Real Estate Association, and I guess in Germany, it's not, like, digital contracts are not backed by like contract law where in America it is so you can't actually trade things digitally because like digital signatures hold precedent in Germany it doesn't so there needs to actually be like legislation switch for that to occur so that's what he's focused on but because we're in America uh, we actually ironically because it's like it's such a strange field right now um, we actually have some sort of precedence to create some sort of real estate application which is yeah. cool. So more on that soon as well. We're making moves on that. Mm -hmm. um, also to note, um, honorary kind of a ghost advisor. Uh, we have Alex from ICO Countdown. He's been uh, helping us out. Uh, awesome guy. Just been sitting down with us for hours, helping us really, you know, get, in, yeah. get out a bunch of kinks that we've had, especially he's more focused on the ICO side of things rather than what we're chasing with these corporate partnerships. So yeah, um, he's helping us get acquainted. His whole thing is like, uh, you know, he's telling us exactly what we need to focus on. So like his, a lot of it was like cybersecurity, right? Like turning and completeness of our smart contracting language is a really, really, really big deal. And so, you know, I wrote a piece on uh, why turning completeness is bad and the attack vectors of Ethereum. Um, and that prevents a lot of companies from adopting it. So we're addressing that. So he kind of sits back and he was one of the first consultants into the Asian market, so he knows a lot of these yeah. things. He's like, this is what people respond to. You need to be focusing on this. So he, he guides the ship. Yeah, he's been not very helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, then we also, we have uh, Maureen Cannon. Uh, so she is uh, mainly marketing side, been helping me out there, um, and especially helping out Jordan and the rest of the team. Um, she was a marketing lead over at Paxful, uh, which is one of the original ICOs as well. Uh, so she's been helping us, you know, get community engagement and uh, the ICO out list outreach. So she's been also fantastic help. Yeah, yeah. So we have Deji too as an advisor, and he works at AT and T. Uh, so he's interested. He's trying to figure out where he can put blockchain inside the organization, which is so massive. So one of the things he was saying is that uh, if you have the infrastructure of communication, now you can have payment channels, whereas before it was like ACH wires, right? Well, now you can you can wire money anywhere, and at and has plenty of wires, and they also have, uh, they have communication wires into Mexico, so now they can offer payment channel potentially to Mexico. So he's like, all right, how do we talk? How do we do this? Um, I'm very interested in telecommunications from a standpoint of how can we, how can we create um, some sort of like uh, one of the projects I want to do eventually, right? In, in, the, in my life is uh, how do we how do we make sure that uh, net neutrality is never under attack? And one of the ways that I see it is is creating mesh networking that follows uh, TCP/IP 
um, and, but is community supported. And I think crypto can be a, an economic incentive to do that. So yeah. that's one of the things I want to specifically tackle with him is, is that problem. And then uh, another advisor we have is John Orton Jr. Um, he's pretty cool. So we're, we're, we're planning on working on a case study with him to implement um, blockchain and token assets into mobile games. Yeah. So uh, there will be more on this soon. Um, we've been talking with him recently about it. Um, so we'll be able to hopefully have a plan and a public announcement about that uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah, the idea is I'm not a huge uh, kind of gamer in terms of like, TF2 hats or CSGO skins or like League of Legends. My brother is much more into the competitive gaming uh, than I am, but I know enough from like playing games with him and seeing him play games is that it's like a massive, massive industry. Yes. A lot of digital yes. goods hold real value in real life. Like some of these like knife skins on CSGO are like $1,000. And I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. But imagine like trading these digital assets because right now you're contained in one single like market unit where it's like CSGO skins. I'm trading CSGO skins for CSGO skins here. Well, what if you have some other digital asset from another game that you want to swap and trade in that regard? Um, and so with Lambda, you could do that because you create your own blockchain and Valve can say, all right, look, this is how CSGO skins work. Uh, we're not screwing around here. We don't want to pay $1,000 to put one skin on Ethereum. Um, and we want the rules based on what works for our games. Great. And then, you know, Blizzard can do the same with, you know, Overwatch, whatever, and whatever else they create. And then using Lambda, they can interact and swap and be like, okay, our players on each of these ledgers are trading and Lambda's that mediator between them. And so that's the play. So pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, there's a lot of members behind the scenes as well. I mean, uh, we're in discussion with some major major companies. Uh, I don't know if can I name them. If we're just talking with them. If we're talking with them, yeah, we're just yeah. we don't have partnerships set up yet, but we are in discussion with uh, Verizon, Aflac, SK Telecom, so on. I'll leave it at that for now until we get some real stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, some real estate companies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, how sure. can we? And it's opening doors, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not. I don't want to be Iota. Who no, likes? No, no, no. <laughs> don't listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> joins like joins a group and it's like, oh, we're working with Microsoft. No, Woo. okay, no bullshit. Okay, so we're 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 talking with these people and we're approaching like say when we approach Affleck, it's because we want an insurance case study and we want them to find a pilot program for us and then. How do we work with that, wrap that up into a SaaS model, and then that is something that's an application that's on the Lambda yep. uh, network. And so, you know, very straightforward approach. And you can kind of think of a, the company in that regard, and that's like the enterprise side of things, as a venture studio uh, by which we can fund these, these uh, interesting pilot programs and turn them into actual companies. So, yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, the last thing I think to add is behind the scenes, the last team members of Lambda is... Uh, we have uh, multiple lawyers we've been working with. Um, we have an account we're reaching out to, so I mean, we're covering all our bases there. So moving forward, we're fine. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So. I think um, yeah, there's a lot of turmoil, um, yeah. and so you know we've done a lot of uh, due diligence ourselves to to navigate the market. Um, essentially, you know, uh, word on the street in terms of like SEC put out something yesterday and they're like, yeah, be careful again, right? And that's that's aimed at like Main Street, which is the, the public. And then they closed down Munchie, which I guess is blatantly a security fraud. Uh, but we've done a lot of work because, you know, we're very serious is about creating something of value. Like I'm, I'm interested in cryptocurrency from a technical standpoint, you know, and I'll be damned if, if uh, the SEC is coming at me and acting like I'm defrauding people, because yeah. it's, it's the, the point of the, the company is to produce the technology and to produce the, the technology that's of value and solidifies itself in this like, you know, crazy disruptive world that's happening. And so that's the point. And so that being said, there's certain things that we can do. Uh, Quant Stamp did this, uh, but but they didn't. I don't think they had an actual lawyer go through this, where <laughs> they had like an Excel sheet that was like, oh, this is the Howey test, and we score low on this sheet, therefore it's not a security. Uh, you know that doesn't necessarily uh, say anything. Yeah. So one of the things we want to do is okay, let's get this passed through an actual lawyer, get a sign off there, and, and lay it to rest because I think a lot of um, a lot of uh, confusion is, is like, what is a token? And we're figuring that out right now as a technical 
or as a technology sort of uh, community. And if we can solidify, like, okay, well, Lambda is not a security, but something else is. That allows us to hone in so then the community at large can, can start making new projects and they don't have to worry about it because I feel like a lot of times um, some people you know, might just do a startup and have the best intentions and then they accidentally fall into this because they're like, oh wait, what? What's, yeah. a, what's a security? I, I've seen everybody else doing it without seeing like the back ends of like, there's a lot of tuning that goes into place to make sure that you're covered and to make sure your your offering is something that's not a security. Yep. So that being said, uh, full transparency uh, there, and we'll be working harder to get that on uh, record as well. So uh, is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's yeah. the team, guys. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, we'll hopefully be pushing out more videos. Um, I'll be doing kind of like a land bin slash blockchain for dummies because some of you guys said you don't understand what Stu's saying, so I'll be explaining it in a little simpler terms, um, and we'll be doing some more dev updates as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, stay posted. Uh, we'll be posting constantly on social media. Join our Telegram and Discord channels if you like to chat with us. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nah, nah, that's it. Right. I mean, more news in the coming days. Yeah. Right, always. So right, stay tuned. Cool. Thanks, guys.